see that. You're on. The bargain. and discouraged under oppressive rule. What can, what can put an end to corrupt leadership? Zechariah, nine envisions a day when God brings down all earthly powers and initiates an eternal reign of peace. Every day, Leaders around the world threaten peace. Mm -hmm. Conflicts and battles are happening all over the globe, mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. The peace the world needs is only available in the foundational principles of honesty, fairness, love, respect, and compassion that originates from the Word of God. Right, right. Like many prophecies in the Old Testament, this text has both an obvious biblical fulfillment and a symbolic future fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Here, the biblical fulfillment is Jesus' triumphal Entry. See Matthew 21 5, John 12 and 15. Revelations 19 11 through 16 echoes and affirms the future fulfillment. Right. The Hebrew <coughs> terms identifying the king. 
indicate the king is a valid or legitimate king, meaning he is descended from David and that he brings deliverance or salvation. Jesus fulfilled these roles not as his peers expected, but beyond their understanding. See Luke 23 and 34. As well as demonstrating his humility in riding into Jerusalem on a donkey's colt, Zechariah foreshadows the new covenant established through Jesus' blood and death on the cross. I have a question that I want to ask. Anybody can answer. Do you think it is possible to establish and maintain world peace? Why or why not? Anyone can answer? I believe that it's possible because only one that can bring world peace is God. And uh, what is happening and what we see, and we're frustrated. A lot of us are frustrated. Amen. And we're whining. We're whining. But we just can't whine. We got to do something about it. Right. We got to go vote. So world peace can come to play. But we've got to understand that God is stronger and better than any problem that we may face. Amen. Amen. Of what use is political peace to a heart out of tune 
with the living God. Hence the problem with America. While peace is an honorable goal, mm -hmm. it requires changed hearts and minds. No nation or power on earth can legislate morality and righteousness. I'm going to say that again. Yes, indeed. No nation or power can legislate morality and righteousness. Right. Yeah, that's true. Zechariah pictures the Messiah of Israel coming to great humility to his people of Israel coming in great humility to his people. He displays his power by riding an untamed, unwritten donkey. Mm -hmm. In the ancient world, horses were symbols of war and donkeys were symbols of peace. Yep. When the Lord returns, he will destroy every instrument of carnal strife. <clears throat> what many years of conferences, submits, and summits and treaties cannot accomplish. The Lord will bring about an authoritative word to the nations. His kingdom of peace will be universal. Right. See right. Psalm 72 and 8. Alright, we're going to move to uh, 11 through 13. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much mm. to you. I will blend Judah as, a, as I bend my bow and fill it with Ephraim. Mm -hmm. I will rouse your sons, Zion, against your sons, Greece, and make you like a warrior's sword. Mm -hmm. Before introducing another military scene, Zechariah offers a word of hope to those in captivity based on the blood covenant named, named at Mount Sinai. Right. God is never slack in his word and never goes back on his promises. Mm -hmm. I think I'll say that again. All right. All right. God is yeah. never slack yeah. in his word and never goes back on his promise. Right. God does not lie, nor can he tell a lie. Keep that in mind. The message of hope is extended to us today. For those who return from the state of captivity, blessings and hope await them. In fact, God has vowed to give abundant blessings in the place of former distress. Right. He tells those who have been hopeless to turn to their stronghold, their fortress, their place of safety. God's stronghold holds securely and cannot be breached. Mm. That's wonderful to know. Mm. Mm. 16 and 17. The Lord their God will save his people on the, that day as a shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown. How attractive and beautiful they will be. Rain will make the young men thrive, and new wine, the young women. Verses 14 and 15 
that are not in today's lesson speak to the victorious defeat the Lord will deliver to the enemies he delivers his people. Yeah. Physical victory is only the lesser blessing mm -hmm. for God as assured spiritual deliverance. Right. The Lord their God shall save them. That's verse 16. The Lord will do it and that will make it complete. Right. I did some research and I'm going to read uh, some of the research that I found that God just bear with me. As valuable as peace is, it is not surprising to find that it is sometimes counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Empty promises of peace can be used to manipulate others. How many times have we seen that? Deceitful men speak words of peace while secretly planning evil. That came out of Obadiah 1 and 7. The Antichrist will confirm a treaty producing a temporary peace, which he will then abruptly shatter as he reveals his true colors. That's from Daniel 19 and 27. False teachers proclaim peace when God is actually proclaiming judgment. That's Ezekiel 13, 10 through 16. In Jeremiah's day, the religious leaders dealt only with symptoms of the national problems without addressing the sinful root of the crisis. These false prophets declared everything was well between God and Israel. Peace, peace, they said, when there was no real peace. Jeremiah 6 and 14. God commands us to seek peace. Psalm 34, 14, and Matthews 5 and 9. We should make every effort to do what leads to peace. Romans 14 and 19. Of course, there will be some who do not desire peace, but we are still to do our utmost to be at peace with them. Right. That's Romans 12 and 18. Right. Believers have an obligation to let the peace of God rule in their hearts. That's Colossians 3, 15. This means we have the choice either to trust God's promises, letting his peace rule, or to rely on ourselves and reject peace he offers. Jesus gave his disciples peace based on the truth that he has overcome the world. That's John 14, 27, 16, and 33. Peace is a fruit of the Spirit. So if we are allowing the Spirit of God to move in our lives, we will experience his peace. That's Galatians 5. 22, 23. To be spiritually minded brings life and peace, according to Romans 8 and 6. The world will continue to have wars and interpersonal conflicts until Jesus comes to establish true, lasting peace. This comes from Isaiah. 11, 1 through 10. But God will give his peace to those who trust him. Jesus took 
the chastisement of our peace. That's Isaiah 53 and 5, and has made it possible for us to have peace with God. Yeah. Once his peace rules in our hearts, mm -hmm. we are able to share that peace with others. Mm -hmm. We become publishers of peace, Isaiah 52 and 7, and ministers of reconciliation, that's 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. All right, that was a little research that I had uh, dove into. Okay, before you contemplate world peace, consider what, whether you are at peace with God. Yeah. I'll read that again. Before you contemplate world peace, consider whether you, you are at peace with God. Romans 5 and 1 mentions that those who are justified by faith have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Are you confident in your salvation and relationship with God? The assurance of being right with God is the greatest peace anyone will ever know. Right, right. Yeah. I think yeah. I'll read that again. Right. The assurance of being right with God is the greatest peace anyone will ever know. Get it. All right. Hebrews 12, 14a, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Mm -hmm. Your relationships matter to God. Are you at peace with your family and friends? and the people in your circle? Does your heart hold unforgiveness toward anyone? Have you offered anyone and failed to make it right? Pursue peace. Start where you are. The world news is filled with reports of unsettling Corruption, chaos, and confusion. It is encouraging to know that our sovereign God governs the actions of rulers and kings and reigns over the nations. Jesus, our King, is coming again to usher in his triumphant, eternal reign. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he shall, and he is the governor among the nations. That's Psalm 22 and 28. So again, I ask the question, will we one day experience world peace on this side of the issue in it?
know, like when you get delivered from something, you say calmness or peace. But not as far as word peace, I don't think it was. Only through Jesus Christ, only through God. Yes, I need prayer for everything. I said, okay. As 
I'm blind. I'm punny. Because I don't want to forget. I'm claiming. Name is not important to me. What you need is not important to me. Just the fact that you said you need prayer, I'm a good person. Amen. And that's my job as a child of God. Amen. That's my child to, that's my job to pray for my enemies. Right. Mm. That's, let's be real. Everybody don't like us for whatever reason. And a lot of them dislike us. Why? Because we're children of God. And they feel threatened by us being children of God. That they are going to be called out of their sin and of this and of that. But guess what? My job is to plant that seed by giving you the word, and it's up to you whether or not you're going to accept it. Mm -hmm. It's not my job to save you and bash you over the head with the Bible until you get it. Yeah. That's not my job. Right. Good. But guess what? I'm grateful and thankful that God saved me turned me around after I asked for repentance so I can open my mouth and tell my story to someone who may be going through the same thing that I just came out of or need encouragement. Mm. You never know what people today are going through. Just a smile sometimes mm. will make their day. Right. And God tells us we never know when we're entertaining angels. Man. So, like I said, I, I, I really don't believe we will experience world peace on this side of the issue. The peace will come when Jesus cracks the sky, comes for his people, the new heaven and earth will be here, and those who didn't get it together, we know where they are, where their home, their eternal home is. And uh, I ask this question, and then I'm gonna move through whoever has any uh, questions or whatnot you can say. I uh, posted on Facebook, this was years ago, I, I asked people, what did R.I.P. mean? I knew what it meant, rest in peace. But I wanted somebody to give me a deeper meaning. So one of my friends uh, answered and said, well, the people, the person will have peace here on earth. So they will have peace when they die. And what I was going to say, I knew it was going to start a big blow up because, you know, people are so quick to say that you're judging. But people have to know death is just the beginning. Okay? So how you have lived your life, if you take your last Great. Being a child of God, you're going to be with God. And if you don't and have not, you're going to be in hell. God states that. So my thing is, if that person that you're talking about has died and you say rest in peace, if he or she was not a child of God, we know where they are. Because they chose. God give us choices. Right. Amen. They chose not to come to God. Like I said, we all have choices. And I choose Jesus. Any questions? Anything anyone needs to say or want to say? You can say it now. Say that the forces of, of evil are very 
I had to pin down for a vicious dog attack to make it secure. When they know that there are restrictions, what we call laws, we have a, a person who, had, who is in a position now to front run uh, Trump. I'm concerned about the number of people who think that this should, he should even be considered. Uh, I'm concerned about the news clip today, Baltimore, another shooting. We have so much unrest in our communities, in our own vicinity, that it's hard to even envision world peace. I think somewhere, it said, it has to start at home. Uh, I, I, I don't know that we have so much work that needs to be done. The, the, the people who have a different orientation than we do should not be banned. We, we have to be able to love everybody, regardless of where you're coming from. I don't hate those people with the dog on the porch, but I will make sure that they can keep the, their dog enclosed. I don't hate a Home Depot that I will soon be facing in court, but I will make sure the judge understands that what they did was wrong. want to incorporate even in our Sunday school hall is giving people the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ Amen. as their personal Lord and Savior. Because you see, there's no guarantee that any of us will even be here later on. After the Tell the truth. Tell the truth. To accept Christ. You know, that there's a uh, there was an old Arab proverb that went like this. Uh, a master sent his servant down to the marketplace to uh, buy some uh, supplies and groceries for the, for, for the household. And all of a sudden, the servant came back white as a sheep. I mean, just totally crying to death. And then the master looked at his servant and said, said what happened? He said, I, I was in the marketplace and I was buying all the items that, 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 that you asked me to get. And all of a sudden, I, I, I bumped into a person and, and I said, excuse me, when I turned around and looked at it, it was death. It was staring right at me. And, and I became so frightened that I just dropped the groceries and, and, and came on back home. Master, would you please lend me a horse? so I can flee to the city of Medina and escape death. Mm. And so the master gave him a horse and, and the servant sped away on that horse to go to the city of Medina to get away from death. Well, the master went down to the marketplace and he found death in the marketplace. And he, and he said, Death, you frightened my servant. You know, why did you frighten my servant like that? And, 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 and the deaf look at the master and says, you know, you know, I didn't mean to frighten him. I was just surprised to see him today because you see, I have an appointment with him tonight in the dinner. <laughs> so, so, so the point is that, that we don't know what death is. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, as the old saints used to say, while the blood is still running warm in your veins, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal right. Lord and Savior. And, and uh, it, it's very easy. The Bible says, you know, believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and you shall be, be saved. So we, we, we want to invite those of you that view us by social media. 
If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, all you got to do is just bow your head, ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. There's a phone number right there that you can call, and someone will be happy to get back with you and share with you how you can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and how you can grow in your walk with God. But if you're here this morning in our sanctuary and you don't have peace with God because you haven't made peace through the blood of Jesus Christ, we want to give you this opportunity right now. Father in heaven, we, we do thank you and praise you for this opportunity to study your word and, 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 and to see that, that there is a day coming when your son, the true king, is going to come in righteousness, holiness, and when he comes, he's going to set up a kingdom where there will be peace from shore to shore all over the world. But in the meantime, Father, as we live in this world of strife, evil, and difficulties, we pray that your Holy Spirit will give us your peace, that you are always with us, and you will always take care of us, and you will deliver your people from all evil and strife. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to be ambassadors of peace, to a world without peace. And if there's anyone here this day, Father, whether in this auditorium or viewing by social media who have not made their peace with you, this day we pray that your Holy Spirit will convict their hearts, draw them to yourself, open their hearts and give them the gift of faith to make Jesus you, Lord, and Savior of their life this day. This we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Again, again, we want to thank you so very much for your presence today. Those of you that are us by social media and those of you that are present, again, thank you, Sister for doing an awesome job. And uh, we look forward to, to seeing you next Sunday in your individual class. And so, so, so as we get ready, we're not going to sign off, sign off. We're just going to take a short break as we get ready to go higher. But with, with a great time of worship and praise and a, and a great powerful message by our pastor. And then afterwards, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And, and we're just going to worship and praise. And so, so uh, invite somebody to come with you next Sunday to our uh, Sunday school, and uh, the question was asked, would we uh, have a live stream Sunday school since we're going back to the classroom? I haven't talked to the superintendent about that, but, but don't worry, we'll make an announcement about that long before next Sunday, but the but best thing to do is, is make sure you're here in the sanctuary, in your classroom, and have a wonderful time of Instruction and Bible study. So, so until next, until next time we meet again, we're not signing off. We're just going to say, we'll see you in a little bit. God bless.